Hey guys, welcome back for another video. If this is your first time to the channel, my name's Jimmy. I am an urban homesteader getting my house ready to sell so we can actually get out into a rural area with some acreage. Uh, but in the meantime, I, uh, I do grow rabbits. A few videos ago, I talked about our, our brand new silver fox rabbits. Um, they are sisters. So far, we've been keeping them in one tractor. They are starting to get old enough where they are gonna, they're starting to fight uh, for the space. So today, I'm going to be building a rabbit tractor. So they'll each have their own space and uh, hopefully we can avoid them fighting like sisters. So I am basing my tractor after Kevin and Sarah from Living Traditions Homestead. I'll link their channel down below. This is a really good tractor design it uh, allows the rabbits to get free to free range without without being loose so uh, let's get started as with most of my projects i'm set up in the driveway because i don't currently have a shop and sometimes the wind likes to blow over my camera let's try that again and this time, I want to start by talking about the sawhorses you saw me working on before the tripod fell over. I have a couple of plastic sawhorses that I've struggled with for years, but I recently came across these fold-up sawhorses from Tough Built and couldn't resist. The legs fold up, making transport and storage a breeze. They're rated to hold up to 1,100 pounds each, which means they're good to go for virtually any job you want to use them on. I'll put a link to these sawhorses below. It's an affiliate link, so I will get a small kickback if you want to buy them. But that's no cost to you, and it really helps to support the channel. So for this rabbit tractor, I'm starting off with 12 untreated 8 foot 2x2s. The rabbits will chew on this, there's nothing you can do about that, so untreated is essential. 6 are cut down to 7 foot 10 inches, then I cut 7 lengths at 40 inches. Finally, I cut 6 lengths at 23 inches for the uprights. With the lion's share of the cuts made, I get to work on the frame. It starts off with three simple rectangles with the 7 foot 10 lengths and the 40 inch lengths. Once those are done, I start attaching the 23 inch uprights in each corner of the rectangle that will end up being the bottom of the tractor. The 5th and 6th uprights go 2 feet in from one side. This will be the enclosed portion of the tractor. I set the next rectangle on top and secure it to the uprights. This next part I could have done when I made my other cuts. I just took a bunch of the scrap left over from the original cuts and put 45 degree angles on them to use as bracing. Since this tractor will get dragged along the ground, the bracing will help keep it stable. Again, I'll put links down in the description for everything I used. And while I'm thinking about it, leave a comment and let me know if you like this type of content and if you'd like for me to make more. It would also be a great time for you to smash that like button and subscribe. After the bracing is attached, it's time to start rolling out the wire. For this tractor, I used 1 inch by 1 inch cage wire. On my first tractor, I used half inch by half inch wire, and while it's just as effective, it's much more difficult to work with. This stuff rolled right on and I was able to staple it to the frame without having to make any cuts. I made the mistake of not checking my phone and didn't realize that it had stopped recording so I didn't get the first part of cutting the siding. But here I am attaching the third and final wall of the rear two feet of the tractor. This back end will be closed in with solid material, giving the rabbit a place to always get out of the sun. 
because rabbits like to burrow, there needs to be some sort of barrier on the bottom that allows the grass to be accessible to the rabbits but prevents them from digging out. Some people put wood slats on the bottom, but I chose to go with vinyl coated 2 inch by 4 inch fencing material. Once that's attached, I rolled the whole structure over and placed the third rectangle on top. This will be the lid of the tractor. I began attaching the hinges at this point, but had to stop to take my beautiful princess to work. Doesn't she look so happy to be gainfully employed? Alright, so once I got back, I finished with the hinges and started on the polycarbonate on the roof. I drilled pilot holes for every screw I used on this because it's basically a plastic material and I didn't want it to crack. I used two 2x8 sheets overlapping to create a nice secure roof on the tractor. To make it easier to move, I used some old tie-down strap material screwed into each end to use as a handle when dragging the tractor to a new area. It worked out really well on the first tractor, but I'm going to have to figure something else out because it tore the first time I tried to use it. Leave a comment below if you have any ideas on what kind of handles I should put on this thing. And there you have it. Rabbit Tractor and Rabbit Tractor 2.0. They uh, both turned out very well. Um, this new one, I love it. I love that one by one wire. Um, as you can see on the inside, I uh, took that, took the top of that barrel, cut it, and put a hole in the top and a and a little doorway on the bottom. This is a acts as a hide for Miss Sandy Pearl here, and. It also gives her a place to, to perch on top if, if uh, she wants to get off of the wet grass if it's raining or something. So far these rabbits, they really enjoy this. I really like it because it gives them a little bit more room to roam and exercise whenever rather than, uh, than what they have in a regular hutch. It gives them a little bit more of a natural life. Um, and they really seem to enjoy it. So, anyways, this is the final product. I am very happy with how it turned out. Alright guys, that's it for this video. Thanks for watching, and don't forget to like and subscribe. And if nothing else, please share this video with your friends if you like this kind of stuff, because I'm just getting started on this platform, and it, that really is the best way to help me reach more people. On the next video, I'm going to show you guys the finished kitchen and bathroom remodels and give you an update on what we're doing to get the house ready to sell. This is all in anticipation of finally getting started on our first true small homestead. Until next time, take care and we'll catch you on the next video.